Now let's practice putting these into lowest terms. You may want a multiplication chart when you do this. So I've brought one right here. Alright, let's start with 12 to 15. First I'm going to look for a list that has both 12 and 15. Note that the ones list won't work because if we divide them both by 1, we'll just get the same term. So don't ever bother looking on the ones list. So here I see a 12, but no 15 on the twos list. I look up here, here's a 12, and here's a 15. And since they're right next to each other, I know that this is going to give me lowest terms. So 3 is my greatest common factor. That means I'm going to divide my first term by 3 as well as my second term. At this point I could use a calculator or I could just continue using my multiplication chart to do my division. 3 will go into 12 four times. So my first term is going to be 4. And 3 will go into 15 five times. So I know my second term is going to be 5. If you go on your calculator, 12 divided by 3, you'll get 4, and 15 divided by 3 will give you 5. I notice these two numbers are one number apart, so for sure this is in lowest terms, and I'll circle it. Okay, let's try 18 to 27. We're going to look for lists that have 18 and 27 now. So here's 18. This doesn't go up high enough for 27, but let me just continue the pattern to see if it would be there. 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. It would skip 27, so I can't use that list. Here's another 18. Oh, and here's 27. So for sure, 3 will divide them both, but I'm going to just see if there's a bigger number that would work for both of them. So I'm looking, here's an 18. Uh, 27's not on that list, though. I'll just keep looking up a little ways. Here's 18. Oh, and here's 27. So 9 and 3 will both divide both 18 and 27. Since 9 is the bigger number, I'm going to use it because it will save me some steps a little later on. So I'll divide 18 by 9, and I'll divide 27 by 9. 9 will go into 18 two times, and 9 will go into 27 three times. Those two numbers are one number apart, so I know I'm in lowest terms. I'll circle 2 to 3 for my ratio in those terms. Alright, let's try the next couple, but we'll use the factor list this time instead of our multiplication chart. Remember that when you do your assignments, you can use whichever way you like best. Let's make our factor list for 25 and 40. 25, 40. 25 just has 1, 5, and 25. Now I can see that this ends in 5 and this ends in 40, so that's a pretty good indicator to me that 5 is going to work. So I know that 1, and 40, 2, and 20, 4 and 10, and then 5 and 8 are going to work too. 5 is going to be the greatest common factor. So that means I'm going to divide by 5 here, and I'm going to divide by 5 here. 25 divided by 5 is 5, and 40 divided by 5 is 8. Now, I don't have a 1 on top, 
and these don't have a gap of 1, so I just need to check that nothing can go into both of these numbers. They're not both even, so 2 won't work. 5 is prime, so 5 won't go into 8. This must be in lowest terms. So we'll circle 5 to 8 as our fraction in lowest terms. Now let's work on 24 and 36. Let's make our factor list. Do it in a spot that gives me a little more room this time. Twenty-four, we did the factor list before it had quite a few. So let's see, it was one, two, three, four, six, eight, twelve, and twenty-four. Thirty-six is one, thirty-six, two will work because it's even, so two and eighteen. 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 5 won't work, 6 will work, in fact 6 times 6 is 36, so that means I'm finished since I found the square root right there in the middle. And now we can look for our greatest common factor. So we can see that 1's there, 2's there, 3 is there, 4 is there, 6 is there, 8 and 9 don't match up, but 12 does, 18, 24, and 36 don't find pairs, so then 12 would be our greatest common factor. Now you'll notice that we've got a lot of common factors here. Any of these numbers will divide both numbers, but we'd have to do some more work if we chose any of these. With 12, we'll get there in one step. So 24 divided by 12 is 2, and 36 divided by 12 is 3. My gap between these is 1, so I know I'm in lowest terms with 2 to 3. Try these next two on your own. So pause the video right now, work them out on your notes, and then start the video again and see if you were right. Okay, I'm going to pull my multiplication chart back out for these ones. Well, I guess I'm going to have to get rid of that writing. Seven and thirty-five. Hmm. Not too many rows have a seven on them, so I find a seven here just on the sevens row, and I see thirty-five there as well. So I know I can divide them both by seven. And you'll see that 7 is the last row where 7 could appear. So I'm going to divide by 7 and divide by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 35 divided by 7 is 5. I look at this and I see that I have a 1, so I know that's in lowest terms, 1 to 5. Now, 24 and 42. Let's look for them on the multiplication chart. Here's 24, 24, 24, 24. Wow, that one appears on a lot of lists. So let's look for 42 now. Here's a 42, and it appears with 24. Here's a 42, but no 24 on that list. No 42 here. Looks like that's it. So we found 42 and 24 both on the 6 row. So let's divide those both by 6. 24 divided by 6 is 4. And 42 divided by 6 is 7. Now I don't have a gap of 1. There's not a 1 on top, so I just need to check. 
Well, they're not both even, so 2 won't go into both of them. 4 won't go into 7. 3 won't go into either of them. So this looks like this is in lowest terms. So I'm going to circle it. 4 to 7 would be the lowest terms I could write that one in. All right, you should be a pretty pro at doing lowest terms fractions. Now you can go on to the next worksheet in your booklet. Good luck.